Yo, what's good, everybody? You're here with your favorite sports cast, the experts coming to you from the Solid Network, All Rights Reserve. I'm here, your host today, CJ the X Factor, here with my co host, Sans, aka Sans Omatic. Salute, what's good? We got our boy here, Graylin, aka Graylin. <laughs> uh, with us today we got a fan AK for, for Graylin guys y'all hit us up in the, in the comments yeah, or in the shoot DMs shoot us some suggestions shoot us some suggestions for Graylin um, today uh, we're just gonna go through NFL picks NFL analysis we're gonna break down the game one the opening game of the season between the Bucks and the Cowboys we're gonna go through a lot of the projections now for Sunday we wanted the, the fans wanna hear what you guys think are going to be the do's and don'ts of the fantasy league. Guys, get the pen on you all now. Some people is paid for their fantasy. Some leagues got money. Don't come to so me if you don't come your here telling fellas, stop, <laughs> you guys. Like, I ain't got it, but so like don't just saying, I don't call no names, but you want to start guys like Ezekiel Elliott and only got about 30 yards. And then Ooh. you got uh, That's a rough uh, day. <laughs> you got Antonio Brown, who ain't even wide receiver one. Drop it all type of points. So let's just let's let's try to get the fans, you know, some accurate picks today, some good analysis, so they could come back and watch us every week. But before we do that, let's just um, say thank you to our sponsors. We're now being sponsored by Rev with the Rev Trio package. They're the headquarters of sports entertainment. Is back once again with the NFL Sunday ticket. The NFL Sunday ticket. Allows you to have access to all the games every Sunday. Can't be that. Every Sunday with no additional cost. Can't be that at all. With the trio, fans have the opportunity to watch every Sunday afternoon NFL game that is played on a simultaneous live basis. No need to worry if your team isn't playing on ESPN or NBC. You could just watch it on the NFL Sunday ticket. So y'all who don't have this rev, go out and get your rev Sunday ticket. I already said once. I can say it again, but I shouldn't have to. Now, nah, before, yeah. let's go, let's get right into it today, guys. Let's go and start. I don't know what y'all want to do. We could recap. Y'all want to recap uh, the Bucks recap. and the Cowboys? Yeah, let's 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 talk about that big game because that was a <clears throat> huge game. Huge, right. huge, huge, huge game. Right, that um, was magnificent. That, I, I heard, I read somewhere that that had the most <laughs> opening day rating since, I think, 2015. So... Really? Well, it was good marketing. I did. Yeah. Right. Com- coming back off of COVID, you needed that 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 boost, mm-hmm. and I think it, that was that boost. Now I heard this from a cowboy fan, so don't 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 quote me on this. But a cowboy fan told me that that opening day game was more watched than the Super Bowl. I don't believe it. Uh, I don't know. I quote no you that. I don't, I don't I quote me. I know how they go. Yeah. One thing with them, everything is the biggest once the Cowboys. In the Let's world. look at the Fox. Though. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying they right. Right, we gotta we gotta probably go back and lob and dig for that. But let's let's look at the Fox. That is America's team, the Cowboys, versus, and this is the Super Bowl. Versus champ. America's player. Versus America's oh, player. Oh boy! And the person where everybody <laughs> loves to hate, right? So I mean, it did draw a lot of ratings in, and pro to be honest, it lived up to the hype. I was about to say, right. it lived up to the hype. That was a phenomenal game from it was, start. To it was it, the result was typical though. Typical Brady. Doc, give him too much time, and Brady did what Brady does, right? I wouldn't say typical, because I watched a lot of those pregame shows, and I don't even think it was uh, predicted to be that close. No one had it predicted to be that close. Everyone on the pregame show mm-hmm. picked the Bucks, and everyone right. was like, hey, um, yeah. yeah, Tom Brady can go off. Pretty much. and Because we also know that the Cowboys were bringing back a okay defense. Not no top-of-the-line defense. So everybody, is know that, everybody knew that Tom Brady would have shred that secondary. Which he did. Mm-hmm. No one expected Doc to do what Doc did. Yeah, thank you. No one expected Doc, Doc to come off in, injury. I yeah. had the I had to even message and say, "Listen, you doing a good job." Because my thing <laughs> is, I don't like Doc that much. But like some of the throws he was making to me were harder than Tom Brady throws. Tom Brady was definitely in the pocket, and every now and again he had to step up. But Doc, Doc was throwing while he was getting hit. Doc was throwing on the run. Doc was making some unbelievable. Bread basket throws, we like to call it. And I was like, bro, who is this guy? Like, I, I said it, like, um, after the game. If someone had told you before the game that Ezekiel would be limited, right? <laughs> Tom Brady would throw for about 380 yards, right? And he'd connect with Kronk on two touchdowns. 
And Antonio Brown would still have a great game. Mike Evans would still have a great game. I think most people would be like, but this could be a blow. Yeah. Right? And for me, Doc was the best player on the field um, Thursday night. I ain't got no problem saying that. Right? I can start the takes. He was the best player on the field Thursday <laughs> night. Um, oh, but boy. his biggest problem or his biggest uh, flaw, I guess, during that game was he just left too much time on the clock for Tom Brady. Which, I mean, it was almost a perfect game. Yeah. Uh, but then you got to understand, his kicker missed, what, three field goals as well? Uh, he missed a 31-yard field goal. And that's why he couldn't so, do and he missed what Tom the, Brady did. The extra point. If, I mean, If you watch the last two minutes, you watch that. Dak had to score when he could have score. It wasn't no, oh, well, you know, we could run the clock down. We don't right. want to put too much pressure on this fella. You don't right. miss all game. Yeah, precisely. But you saw what Brady did. When Brady got the ball, uh, they drove down the field. And then them last three players, Brady just was dropping back and throwing it out of bounds because he didn't want to leave any time on the clock because right. he realized that, hey, we're paying the kicker for a reason. Yep. You, you got one job, bro. We don't ask you to lift no weights. We don't <laughs> ask you to do nothing but yeah, kick the ball. But kick the ball. And we can put you in position and you can make that play. Yeah, so but it was a different it, yeah, feel. It was it was rough for Doc because, like you say, the kicker missed. You missed you three. You have an amazing people. game. Yeah, exceed all expectations, and then the kicker missed three. Field. <laughs> two, two, like come on, like <laughs> bro, come on. But isn't that like two? typical Cowboys? Like it never could be everything lined up for them. It's always oh we got a good offensive line this year. Defense is crap. <laughs> oh we start to get a good defensive line. Or oh, Ezekiel hurt. Oh, we, now we get Zeke back on the offensive line. Dark oh, hurt, Dak yeah. snappy leg. Yeah. Now you get Dak back and Dak doing good. Oh, now we need a kicker? <laughs> oh, come on, bro, man. Like, every time it's something? Wow. And he, but could the Cowboys take any bright any bright, bright spots from that game? You all think? I think the bright spots they could take is Doc. Don't oh, look, he look fully healthy, right? He does. There's yeah. injuries. There was some injury concerns last year. He looked he ready yeah. to go. Um, right? No more concerns for him. No more concerns. So, so when Doc, if Doc plays bad next game, you don't want to hear. Ah, uh, yeah. Coming up no crying. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, that dude yeah, is beyond the adrenaline of the first no, game. No, no, sometimes no, no, no. Too, right? That leg it's looked good. That looked good, good, bro. That leg looked good, and then he had a certain, so they said, a shoulder situation during the preseason. Yeah, that's what they but said. But you can drop back and throw the ball fifty-eight times. <laughs> Obviously, that shoulder ain't hurting. Shoulder looking nice too. That shoulder can't right? be hurting. Mm-hmm. You throwing the ball fifty-eight no, times. Yeah. You got a prime Zeke in the back there. You ain't one hand the ball. Off, you want true every time. Uh, Obviously, you 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 know what you're doing. They gotta put me over there, and I do the same thing as he was doing. <laughs> Boy, listen, foolishness. <laughs> so you gotta level. Now he was blocking good though. Yeah, but I, 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 given who they went up against, I I understand why he didn't have 200 plus yards. Yes, I, I, I mean, of course he didn't get 200. Understandable. But sometimes I believe that. But you have that more of impact. Though. Coaches overthink things, like they overcoat sometimes because you know you're going up against one of the best run defense. You saying, oh well, not we're one not of gonna... not one of the best. Well, even the best it, in twenty twenty and the best in twenty nineteen. Are the best. You have to realize that things set things up. Even if you stop in my run, by me running the ball and I like push you, I wearing down your defensive line. Right. I ran down that pass rush also right. by running the ball. But if I overthink it, I'd be like, boy, we can't run the ball in there. That means they can expect that, okay, I could send fire at Doc every, every time he drop back because mm-hmm. these fellas don't scare us. Yep. So it's like you got to, you understand and you recognize that, yeah, this is the best Russian defense, but you still got to go hands up and challenge that. Like you got to say, hey, we know that, but we can still send Zeke the punch up there because when Zeke did get the ball, he still got... Good yards every now and again. Yeah. I mean, three yards here, four yards here. So, you he know, no big average, runs. Yeah, average uh, two yards a carry. Yeah. yeah. It was no big yeah. runs, but you got to soften up that, 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 that pass rush. You got to soften up that defensive line because the, 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 when you rush the ball, people think it's only for the rushing defense. You also soften up the pass rush. Right. Because now mm-hmm. when you play action, they can collapse yeah, they can, in yeah, for, the for the rush. And now you yeah. back there, you sitting now, you could pick, pick a poison. You could go and find anyone up there. So I felt... Uh, the coaching, I, I don't know. It's still a good game. All together, it was a good All game. together, yeah, it was, was a very good game. game. Yeah. But um, Dallas could have win it. That was a winnable game by Dallas. Very winnable very game. Very winnable. Very winnable game. Down the stretch, um, Ezekiel has, I mean, no, secret. Down the stretch, Doc did what he's supposed to do. Um, he got them within field goal range. They made the field goal. It's just like we said before. He just going up against the goat, bro. Yeah, I mean, Brady yeah. does, but Brady yeah, does. Yeah, nothing much you, you know can do I mean? against and the they goat. And they look good, too. Like I yeah. told you all before. The box look good. You don't the play offense and defense. Really you only can do your part, that's, bro. That's just an uh, unfair advantage of weapons they got enough yeah. for you, bro. And Honestly. The, what, what do you guys think about the, the, the last call? Well, no, oh, the no call, I should say. On the... Offensive. In a, so-called. 
Offensive passing. Not called. Offensive passing, I, apparently. But, yeah. Because, I mean, on my end, my end, I play football. In a situation like that, on a back shoulder pass, he was pushing more to spin than to push off. Because when you you running forward, now when you go to create a spin, you can naturally... It's almost like basketball. Yeah, when you do a spin move on someone, you can naturally... Understandable, swim. but yeah. intent... Does, intent... How but how much extend. does intent matter? The dude, the the CB was on his heels, so it's, all you have to do is this. Not my fault. Stay on your toes. <laughs> you young have blood. to give him no pressure at all. Stay on your toes, young You could blow blood. out of him, yeah. and he's gonna fall. Stay fall on over. your toes, young blood. He blow him and he you got a back pedal. That's, that's what we teach that's you. That's almost impossible. I, so I, I regardless mean, if his intent was to push off or not, he made the contact. He made the contact, and he made he enough contact to make extend. him. But you don't have to because the CB is on his heels. The rule oh. is you have to fully extend for it to be offensive. Uh, part. And then, you know, offensive will get the call. That's like yeah, if, 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 if both of yeah. those guys caught the ball at the same time and they they fighting for it, the offense will get the ball. Yeah. Like, that's just the rule. The off- it's more offense-dominated uh, uh, game. And it is. Which is so unfair, but I always just watch football and I it, like, it, It's never fair. Like I tell guys, it's, it's, no thing is ever going to be 50-50. <laughs> so it's like it isn't no, fair. No, it ain't going to be 50-50, but the ratio could be closer. Yeah, I think it's the ratio with other sports are closer. Yeah, 60-40. In other sports, I think the ratio is closer. Take this it. is a, But you know what? You, this is to be expected because this is one of the sports where a completely set of players has come on the court for the opposing side. It's yeah. a set of players for offense and yep. a set of players for defense versus other sports where... The same players playing offense, playing defense. So yeah, it's to be expected, I guess. Yeah, well, what about you, Sans? How do you feel about the call? Um, it's one of those things where uh, when you, I wasn't really too surprised to see it. Um, I do think uh, it's a tough call to make, put it like that. In my head, you know, it's, it's the first thing I said in my head. The first, thing I, the first thing my anti-Brady self uh, said okay. was, Brady got away again. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those calls <laughs> where you come, you 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 expect in a game where Tom Brady plays. I just say that. Brady got away. Again. Right? Yeah, it's that. Superstar I get superstar calls, so I get yeah. it. But it's like, but it was a no call though. It wasn't a I've call. Same thing. Yeah, like, superstars yeah, get superstar yeah. no calls. If I mean, don't forget now. But the, Brady was the one before this game in the preseason. Yeah, I mean, who said that? Hey, defense will get more. This calls, is how this is how the league wants it. But it ain't, like, right, I can I'm throw not the ball anywhere. And mm-hmm. the second that DB gets in the way, they can give it a pass in the fence. Yeah. Where in actuality, I might have overthrown that ball or I might have underthrown that ball, but the DB just trying to make a play on the ball. He bumps into right. the receiver, pass in the and, fence. And you could never, ever blame the players for that because the players doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Take advantage of exactly. the loopholes, take exactly. advantage exactly. of whatever it is. That, that's what makes them great. So kudos to Brady for being great. And, you know. You got to be a master at also manipulating the game in your favor. That, that, that's and earning, the, and earning the stripes to get those calls. And earning the that's stripes what the to manipulate do. the game in your favor. All the greats do that. That's All the greats say, hey, it's not my fault that you have loopholes. Right. So at the end of the day, most of the greats you see, they do take advantage of certain things. In every sport. And they, they get away with it because they study the game. Yep. So they know, like, I think I, well, that's a whole different subject, but just a small segue. Is I remember Kobe saying something that he only does a certain move at a certain point on the court. Because he, he said, at that angle, the ref will never see it. So he knows where the refs are positioned because mm-hmm. refs eat on the baseline or the sideline. So he's saying, when I am in this corner, I could give you a little job. I could hold your jersey a little bit. I could do this because the ref can't see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in football, like you say, if you, if you go back and rewind that game, you will see that where the ref was situated, the ref was to the end zone, to the pylon. He caught that ball like around someplace around the 50 and 10, yeah. So at that angle, he would not have seen the arm extension or any contact in between. All he know is the ball come in, I looking at the catch, and then when I look the corner back ball down, right. I can't make a call that I didn't yeah. see. Right. So it, it's it's something to to think about. Or I don't know if they. I remember someone saying they wanted to start doing a, a, a cam referee. Like a referee from who who watch the cameras and then he'll make a call or a decision I, like that. I like but, that, yeah, but that would make it too technical. Yeah, yeah. that'd make it too technical. You don't they, yeah, they already have a Sometimes lot. Sometimes it does take the fun out of the game. Stuff in place, you know, flags when you talk, talk about it that. It could have know, been challenged. Like, I think now you could challenge those type of calls. A lot of these stuff, it no, just comes it down no to like you can't challenge yeah, exactly. No call. Yeah, it, no it, call. Just, it just comes down to depending on the refs to make the right play. And you know, when you play in sports, you play in football. Sometimes it just don't. Happen. Sometimes it just don't go your way all the time. But, I mean, like I said, the only great takeaway you could take is that 
you could you could say that both teams still had a great chance to win the game. Yeah. At the end of the day. That's yeah, what and then that's the next thing too. You kick and miss two field goals and you're trying to challenge, you know, you're trying to make it seem like that's the reason yeah, you lose. You gotta slap that bait in the back. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing we have to say. Listen, like, you're missing all these yeah, what you want field me to goals. Like, and I is the reason you lose. That's the first thing I harken back to. Every time I think back, and even though the kicker did give them the lead, right? You still miss like two field goals which you were supposed to. Two field to. goals and an extra kick. Right? Bang. Which you were supposed to. Like like the the sixty yard one, I didn't expect you to kick to no, hit that one. That wasn't right. Right. You only had like one sixty yard one in your career. But the thirty one y- yard one and the extra kick, come on. Like, you know, you gotta do that. Um, so what y'all think about the uh, Cam Newton situation actually? Because Cam Newton been in the news recently and you know, we just had an interview the other day where he talked about his departure from New England and he he basically echoed a lot of the stuff what the media was saying in my eyes um that his aura was too big for the locker room he knows he's an intimidating presence and he felt as if mark jones would have been intimidated by him being a backup not that he was not okay with being a backup because he, he said he was but that mark jones would probably have a problem with it what do y'all think about that i understand his logic I understand his logic and I agree. Because at the end of the day, people don't realize the reason, even in the same franchise, I, I've been a Patriot all my life. The reason why Tom Brady could have come in and play so comfortable is because, right. not only because, like, he was named the starter, but it's also that Drew Brees was injured. So it's like, why well, you go there and throw, yeah, throw, throw two interceptions? What y'all could do? Yeah. Who y'all going to do? That's what was out. So was, he out like, yeah. was that a... Yeah, he was, he, he was out. And then he came back the next yeah. year. Okay. And then we went at it in the preseason and he still lost to Tom Brady. So it's almost like... In this in this situation, it's like... If Cam was there, let's say week one, you're going against the Dolphins now. Now, we always raggy the Dolphins. But the Dolphins now has a defensive-minded head coach who came from the Patriots, who knows Belichick ways. Who knows his scheme? So now week one, the Dolphins could come out with a pretty good yeah. defensive strategy against Belichick. And then say Mark Jones go out there, throw two interceptions in the first half. Now you you're hard pounding. You trying to figure out now, Thinking. man. Yeah. Man, come on, boss. Give me another chance. Cam right. there swinging his shoulders. Waiting. Hey boss, I you know Cam always got the towel on his head. Dancing. You know what it is, you know you know, it is for dancing it's, dancing. It's, it's just it's just it's horrible. horrible. Situation. And then the fellas, you got to look at teammates. These Cam boys. Cam is a friendly guy. Like, people love him. So now, yeah. you done throwing two interceptions. Everybody looking like... Everybody looking at Belichick. Hey, you got to get Cam in there. You got Cam, yo. Got to get Cam in What then, you could do? I, I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, you have a rookie quarterback being backed up by a former MVP. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean... With a huge personality. Right. Once you mess up a few times, exactly. you know, all your confidence comes. And then, obviously, with the, NF, with the NFL MVP, he still believes that he's really a, a really, really good player. It'd be one thing if he if 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 Cam thought he was washed. Cam don't think of himself as washed. No. He think he's still a really good quarterback, even though he did say he would be okay with being a backup. We know that. Dang. You know he probably <laughs> he probably would prefer to start. And, and he know he'll be waiting in the wings. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, what is the best option for you to do if you're New England? If you really want to move on from Cam Newton, if and- you. Especially if you got a guy who you could see that potential in, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, and you need to at get the end of the day, him. we all need that, that 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 rope. So, like I say, if, with Cam being there, that shortens your rope. Yeah. So you need that comfort now, because he's gonna mess up. No mm-hmm. quarterback controls zero in Even if it don't shorten his rope, mentally it does. Exactly. Mentally, he thinking. He always Shoot. looking over his shoulder. MVP, but yeah. Cam, but to come and take my yeah. So at the end of the day, if you come in there, you you're not gonna not throw an interception. You're going to throw interceptions. You're going to have fumbles. You're going to have bad plays. You're going to have overthrows. You're going to have plays that you should have made that just didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And you don't want that to be playing back in your mind. And then you're looking over there. And like I say, someone over there warming their shoulder up. Yeah, you can be, the, the <laughs> it can mess with, it can play with your mind a lot. The the and then road. also don't forget now, Belichick is a master of the salary cap. This is why Belichick isn't only our head coach. He's our GM. We never needed a GM for the past 20 years because this guy knows how to maneuver the salary cap. And you got a rookie coming in on a rookie contract. You got Cam here for 14 mil. Mm-hmm. And this rookie will play in Cam. I just see 14 yeah, mil like just, a free up off the books. That doesn't make that's all I sense at. to keep him on as a backup too. That's, if he don't make the, the roster, I don't really even have to pay him a roster bonus. I just free up millions of dollars on my book after having one of the biggest spending 
all seasons in Patriots history. So it's like financially it made sense. Uh, physically it made sense. On the field, off the field it made sense. So it's like, hey, uh, Kiam, let yeah. me see you for a moment, eh? It, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate that happened to my boy because you know, I love I love Kiam, but you know, I think to the interview was also a little bit of damage control. You know, I think he's just trying to get that out, the, the word out to, to, to the NFL, the rest of the NFL teams. Yeah, that, you don't want the ego. Like, bro, I could play the backup. You know, I don't, I don't have no problem coming off the bench and, you know, backing up, you know, because I know, he, he, of course, he realizes his options are very, very limited. Very, very limited. But you will have situations Stance during options. the year now. Don't forget injuries. You got, uh, you, got, you got injuries. You got people who underperform. You might just need a plug. Like Cam could come in and, 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 and give you a good three to five game stretch where yep. he could hold your team afloat long enough to get you into the playoffs. He could, he could give you a Fitzpatrick. Have a, <laughs> a, a fight. He might Fitzpatrick. have to take over from Fitzpatrick. He could give you a Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Let's just say you go, <laughs> you see Washington. Washington might start off 0 3, 0 4. People start booing and carrying on. Cam might be that fit. And to, Washington, to, don't, they, don't have, they won't have patience right now yeah, because yeah. they're good. They so, ain't never building teams. So I'm still holding out hope for Houston, though. La, I remember. I remember last year. I said that New England. I felt New England would have been the landing spot for Cam. But I feel sort of similar for Houston. But I never thought that New England would have. Uh, that's not Cam's. I don't know if it will work, but I thought it would have happened. That's not Cam's style. Uh, yeah, and I'm I surprised that he they even last all year. Yeah, I I know. I I felt like he would have been a good fit because I watched Cam a lot off the field, and he's a hard worker. That's all Belichick really wants. Yeah. Talent is one thing. Belichick wants hard workers. That's why you got people like Mark Jones and Tom Brady. Like, Mark Jones is a hard mental worker. Like, people look at him and say, oh, look how bad he's shaped. He doesn't look like an NFL quarterback. Tom Brady doesn't need him. Until his yeah. last year, until yeah, he went on this whole diet thing and like plant-based stuff. Tom Brady used to look stinking his face, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm mentally, like Tom Brady is the first one in, last one out, breaking down films, going over plays, repeatedly over and over and over again until he find the flaw and then until he finds the solution. As far as I saw in the preseason, they say that that's what Mark Jones does as well. So it's like, Cam is a very good physical hard worker, but I, I, I've I never seen Cam to be a, a film he's, study guy. He's, yeah. a, he's a physical hard worker. He's a physical talent. Um, but then, you know, it's, it's intricacies to the game. Yeah, and IQ plan. plays a role. And obviously, shoots. Throwing accuracy <laughs> plays a serious role. So, you know, I mean, if, it, if you know, if, if those things holding you back, then, you know, it's only so far you could really get with your physical tools wow. at that position. And then, like you say, people look at it as the injury, from the injury standpoint, like, Cam hasn't been healthy in like four seasons. Like, every season he has a neck, a knock, something going mm-hmm. on. So, you want to look at that going into the season. Just like if we look at the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens came into the season now with high expectations coming off a good season last year. And before the season even start, you lost your starting running back and your backup backup running back. Mm -hmm. And now you got to go sign guys who were cut from other teams. They didn't even give Todd Gurley a look. I was surprised at that because Todd Gurley sitting out there is like the dog only like 27, 28. So I was like, okay. But they got... You went and signed Latavius Murray? Yeah. Like, really? And Todd Gurley sitting out there? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Todd, but I thought he would have been a good fit for, for the Ravens. But now, don't th- don't forget now, now you rely on a mobile quarterback to carry a lot of your rushing load. So now what happens when I, I used to, t- I always tell people I'll never forget RG3 because I watched that game when he got hit out of the game. He got his mind up. And I was like, boy... It only takes one blind side. They run him right over. One man. out of the pocket where it play. Look at Doc. Doc really wasn't even hit. The guy yeah. wrapped Doc up and just fell on his leg yeah. and snapped his whole thing in half. So it's like, you can't put your quarterback at that amount of risk because you don't have a rushing game. Mm-hmm. Which and is why they, and they thought they was higher in the rushing game too. Exactly. Yeah. They didn't even want to bring in no free agent because they, they felt Dobkin, Dobbins, this was his this, this was his year yeah. to break out. But yeah. I guess it was his year <laughs> not to break out. You could have said something where it's just not. I'm glad you did. <laughs> I, I went to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did. Um, but, hey, you know what's crazy? That's their third running back to get a torn ACL. Wait. 
in like the span of like maybe two weeks. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I so don't, I don't you know. You have Dobbins, and then you oh, got uh, training ooh. facilities. Something got to be going That's on. Yeah, something went going on. Someone ain't stretching right. And that's that's it. It. Someone ain't paying the, 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 the training coach. So he ain't wine, but nothing. That's <laughs> crazy. And then, you know, you got your cornerback also get a torn. Yeah, your best cornerback. Yeah, anyway, so no, just like, your cornerback, your best cornerback. But injuries it, is part of the game. Yeah, but not, and, not that. Not yeah. that. That you should yeah. That's see, a, it that's doesn't. A and then like, it doesn't. But it doesn't stop the show. Then it, they used to get yeah, uh, you got fill slots, the and at the end day you got to go there and perform. And it could be a rough. And I could just see, I could just see that tempting. Uh, Lamar to say, you know what I mean? Like he give it to a running back. He felt he feels is not adequate enough. He just oh, yeah. trying to take it himself. Because now don't forget he has a lot something. of options. So if I don't see you do foolishness for like two or three hand offs, yep, I pull I it, it out. Right. This RPO, bro. <laughs> I ain't gotta give you this yeah, ball. I'm 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 former league MVP. I, I ain't gotta really. So that's that they got to work with him on that. Cause... So, like with that being said, now we're gonna get in now to our expert picks. Now considering the injuries, now considering the signings, now considering the releases, now considering the storylines, let's see if we could get into our expert picks for the week. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Who's, who's, we got who's, who's first game? 15 games coming up. But how are we going to do this now? We're going to give picks of 12 of our 15 games, and then we're going to highlight three of the most important game or what we see to be our expert pick games of the week. So let's start off with game one at 1 p.m. Keep in mind, you can catch all this on Rev Trio. <laughs> 750 to 765. Uh, let's go say uh, Seahawks versus the Colts. 1 p.m. What do you guys think and who do you guys think are going to come out on top in that game? I'm going with Seahawks. Really? I, you just, I, yeah, just throw it out there. Yeah, I just think I, I, don't, I don't see. I just don't have no faith in Vance, to be honest. Wow. I, I, I so. did. He let me down. I just, he, just, he just seemed like he... Sound like you in heartbreak mode. That could be an early retirement for him. Um, I think so. I go, I go, I go with the Seahawks. Um, I see, obviously, they, they, have, they have a better offense. They're, they're more stable. Um, Wentz, he, he might have been the worst quarterback in the league last year, if you're being <laughs> honest. <laughs> um, so, oh, boy. It, it could be a rough transition for him. To get back to the level where he once was at, um, but yeah, I think he I was almost an MVP one time. Yeah, almost don't come. But almost let's just keep in mind yep. these expert picks are now gonna be recorded, and by the end of the season, you guys will know who predict the best. You guys will expert know. Graham predict the best so, expert picks. Before I make my pick, I would like to say, from what I see in. Schemes play a lot, especially with quarterbacks. You got people like Carson Wentz, who is now back with his offensive coordinator, who is in a very motivated situation, who's coming in with good running back, good wide receivers, who coming in with a good defense. And to be honest with you, this Colts team is much improved from the playoff Colts team with Phillip Rivers. So with that being said... I game with the Seahawks. Seahawks. I know. <laughs> of course, you gotta be the you gotta be the contrary. I game with the Seahawks regardless. <laughs> I don't care what Matt Stem doing in the back there. That ain't none of my business. I'm like, you only talking the, about the one Seahawks, game though. The Seahawks bring in the Seahawks bring in back what the Seahawks bring. <laughs> you still got the same coaches. You got a high powered offense. You got DK Metcalf, who's a Jesus. monster. You He's got an Jamal Adams, who just signed his his extension. These guys ready to go. Uh, yeah. yeah, good luck, Colts. But let's let's see we play week two. Yeah. Week one, I got the Seahawks. Week two, yeah, we we come out here week two. Because. I don't know. Maybe when they when they when they start playing, when I see how our boy Mike Mike Strong doing, then maybe yeah, I'll know. yeah, maybe I'll have to yeah, get the ball shut, right. Shut is he, is he playing yet? Because I know Ty went down. Is he? I don't know how the depth chart look, but I know Ty Hilton. He should be. He he games. should see the field. Yeah, I don't think he's a starter right now, but he should see the shut field. Shut up, Mike Strong. Game two, we got the rookie, first number one pick, leading the Jacksonville Jaguars, versus the Texans, 
It was coming off a very, very interesting, interesting off season where you had uh, your QB who was leading the league in passing yards last year. Now, isn't there? And you come with Tyrod Taylor. Uh, I mean, I'm glad the brothers them getting a chance. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, Tyrod, um, I've seen you playing on other teams, uh, and. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm not impressed, but not to that level of you. You filling in for Deshaun Watson? Yeah. that's different. Mm-hmm. And Deshaun Watson had a had a, a rough time carrying this team. Yeah. So now you in a situation where you lost some wide receivers. You were, you lost one of the best wide receivers in the league mm-hmm. last year, and now you bringing in a backup QB to be your starter. But, but that, the good thing is you playing the Jaguars. So. <laughs> What's the all picks on, uh, <laughs> on that? Uh, I, I I actually will go with the Jaguars. Um, you, reason being, you feeling Urban Meyer? Reason being, te- uh, the Texans are a mess, right? So this this really like the pick the the, the best out of the the worst. But I do like the Jaguars team a little bit more. Um, I have a lot of faith in Trevor Lawrence to be a really, really, really good quarterback. Um, really, I think he is arguably one of the best prospects since. Tense. Andrew Luck. Um, and, you know, he, he warming up. He warmed up to the game. He had a great preseason game um, to close against Dallas. He completed like 11 or 12 passes or something like that. Ooh. So, Hercules. Against the Texans defense. <laughs> and like I said, the Texans are a complete mess. Tyrod Taylor starting, yeah, cool and all that. But defensively, they, they, they're pretty shabby. So, I, I expect, if you have Trevor Lawrence, by the way, this, this is my official... Sign off. You have Trevor Lawrence in fantasy. You should you should expect a pretty good week. <laughs> so I go to Jaguars. Oh, okay, That's a hard thing. okay, buddy. Yep. We'll recap that. I, yeah, that I goes. Am, I am equally <laughs> as or probably not equally, but I am similarly as high on Trevor Lawrence. Not not that high, but I high on Trevor Lawrence. But listen, this is like this is the bottom bowl. These two teams, the toilet bowl, both game. are horrible. Yeah. So it should be a close game, given that no, it, there's no huge skill gap. But I don't see um, the Jaguars winning this game. I think the Texans going to win this game. Just given the fact that Lawrence is going to make some rookie mistakes that he has to make, that every rookie makes. And until he gets clicking, I don't see them winning up a bunch of games. I believe he will Definitely make those mistakes. Definitely not his mistakes. first game. Yeah, I believe he will make those mistakes, just not against this team. <laughs> <laughs> what's, well, your, what's your big egg factor? With that being said, I would say... Uh, looking at the matchups, um, let's be real. The Jaguars might have had the number one pick, but I watch fantasy. I play fantasy, and then I watch. Like I say, you have to do an eyeball test. Jacksonville has wide receivers. Jacksonville has running backs. Pretty good running. Backs. Jacksonville has a much improved defense, and not to say to the level of oh they can make the playoffs, but like like San said, versus the Texans. I think I, I'm going with the Jacksonville Jaguars to win this game, give Irvin Meyer his first win of the season. Um, I just feel like with all that is in place, and I am not that high on Trevor Lawrence, but obviously he was good enough to beat out Gardner Minshew, who was playing good ball for them for the past season or two. Mm-hmm. And if they could see, I mean, obviously he's a number one pick. He's a number think, one pick too. So I, I don't think that they're going to bench you regardless. Yeah, but the factor. I feel like they have enough to squeak this one out. There ain't going to be no landslide, but I th- I feel like they have more than the Texans based on what the Texans lost this season. And they wasn't really that good last year anyways. So yep. my pick for that is the Jacksonville Jaguars, surprisingly, because I, mean, I never picked them in my life. <laughs> That's what you say, you're the first time picking but, them. It must be last time I picked them. It must be when Blake Balls is there. But, <laughs> well, that's yeah. our picks. But for game three, we got the Battle of the Birds. We got the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know how y'all feel about that. I, I don't know. Uh... How do I feel about that? I got I got the Eagles. Wow. I'm, I, I'm high on uh, uh I'm not high on Matt Ryan, I'm high on uh Jalen uh, Hurts. Hurts. He had a pretty good season last year. Mm-hmm. And you remember I told you I was a Wentz fan and so yeah. I guess maybe I'm biased because when Wentz when Hurts came in and played for Wentz, I'm like, hey, look, this is pretty good. So maybe I am biased given the fact that 
Hurts carried a team that it seemed like Wentz could not. But I, I'm going Hurts over Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan is on his, his past his prime and is on his way out. <laughs> That's real. What about you, Sam? Um, I might have to echo Graylin's sentiments. Um, I think Hurts, I, I like Hurts as a player. Uh, I think it'll be a close game. Um, I could see the Eagles edging it out. Um, Matt Ryan, I don't, uh, I I don't have a lot of faith in him as a quarterback, but he he has been able to get the job done before in the past. Um, and I think it'll probably squeak out a close one. Well, um, as much as I hate to agree, I I don't have much choice in this in this 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 <laughs> this segment here, um, but. I got to go with the Eagles because at the end of the day, the Falcons, like you say, Matt Ryan is on the downside of the hill. Let's be real with that. Uh, they lost Julio Jones. Obviously, you lost a big wide receiver. And people don't realize, people don't know Calvin Ridley is one thing when you was a number two. Yeah, right. And you yeah. feeding off right. a number one. And now it's different when you're the number one. You're getting that double coverage. You're and getting that, that high scheme. On they high on Ridley and I don't understand so, yeah. why. So you got to be careful with that because now teams can actually look out for you. They don't yeah. have to worry about Julio no more. And you wait, you depending on someone like a Pitts or someone like a tight end now to, to take pressure off your rookie tight end to take pressure off you? Boy, well, bro, I hope you don't get paid. Cause this is your last season. <laughs> so I gained for game one, I gained with the Eagles. So that's, that's, that's how it goes with that. This one, uh, like I say, a lot of these, I don't know, these one side, uh, at least are our picks. Now, we know it's Sunday. Uh. It's any given Sunday. But besides that that game that we already recapped a lot of these games look one sided they do so we got up next we got the LA Chargers with the young and up and coming Herbert. star I wouldn't say superstar yet star, star. he's a star he's a Justin star. Herbert he's a star along with some of the best wide receivers and their running back is coming back now mm-hmm. uh, also Joey Bosa them on the defense is still there Going against not a shabby a, team. A superstar. Yeah. You going up against a nice defense in Washington. A superstar quarterback. Who, uh, boy? <laughs> say the superstar <laughs> quarterback. You get some of this? <laughs> they, 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 they sign, boy. You got some breaking news or something. <laughs> Y'all can start disrespecting <laughs> Fitzmagic. some breaking news. A, this is Fitzmagic breakout here. Yeah? Right here. Uh, the last year's uh, the last year's uh, his career could be his breakout year. Yeah, that's how that's yeah. how it yeah, work with Fitzmagic. Stop, boy. Uh, whew, okay. Justin Herbert is nice, but Fitz Magic is magical, bro. I go on with uh, Washington. Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I, I, I go, I go. <laughs> I actually, I actually go with Washington. Oh, okay. Um, Washington's a home team, yeah. All right. Um, they, they, have, they really have a good defense, and they just added um. Another linebacker, Jimmy and Davis. No to that to that defense. Um I love Herbert. <laughs> and and Herbert is a is a, is is a, like you say, a star in the making. He does handle pressure well, which Washington is known to do, right? But I just feel like, you know, at some point sometimes those situations can catch up to you. And I feel as if this might be a situation where, you know, Washington has his number, at least for this game. Yeah. <laughs> I expect Fitzpatrick to play good. He always plays good. Um, first, couple of <laughs> first couple of games. To start the season. So I don't think it's going to be no different. I think he's going to start off very well. And I think Washington Steelers this one. Oh, yeah. Well, this make it easy for me. I get, I get with the Chargers. At the end of the day, um, I feel like the usually week one, I could be real. You, you usually have the better teams be better prepared. Not to say that Washington is a scrub team, but at the end of the day, being realistic, the the Chargers have better personnel, better coaching, better staffing right now. You got, like I say, you got a, a, a QB who's going to be better this year, who's projected to be better. Let me say that. Then you have your star it running back who's coming back off an of injury. You got nice tight ends. You got one of the best receivers in the league, Keenan Allen. Then you got the top of the line defense that's going to, Give Washington fits and fits magic. It's gonna be <laughs> under some pressure. Should look good when though. these guys, this this should actually because these two these teams are actually closer than they appear. Yeah, 
Ran the yeah. to, to This is one of the better games. Yeah, this might be yeah, one of the better one o'clock games. Mm-hmm. So I, I, me personally, yeah, I get with the Chargers. I feel like the Chargers could squeeze this one out uh, with some late game heroics, um, and probably running the ball. Even though the 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 Washington's a good pass defense and pass rush, like I told you with the with the Cowboys and very good pass rush. Bucks, if you if they could run the ball and get some. Valuable yards. I think they could soften up that 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 Washington defense a little bit. Tell they catch yourself. Um, another game after that. Well, all these are at the same time, and don't forget you can catch all these games on the NFL Sunday Ticket through where the only one in the Bahamas that could bring you the NFL Sunday Ticket. You only subscribe to the NFL Sunday. Ticket. So, uh, we got the Steelers and Bills, one p.m. How do you all feel about that? Um, ain't really much. Contest with the Vic, right? <laughs> okay, <give me. laughs> All right, I got the Bills. Um, yeah, Josh Allen is coming off a tremendous uh, third year, sixty-nine um, percent completion percentage. Uh, I think he's gonna have another leap this year. Um, the Steelers can their defense handle them? You know, what I mean, they just lost Mike Hilton. Um, you know, do they have enough to 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 contain? That type of offense, I go with the Bills. I am a Josh Allen fan. Mostly because I drafted him in fantasy. Picked him up in fantasy last year, and he helped me win championship. So, Josh Allen fan for life. I actually draft Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. So, for my psyche, I am going to pick them in every prediction that we do. Just, <laughs> just FYI. So, I got the Bills... <laughs> beating the Steelers this, this week. Oh, well, I mean, I guess, like I say, some of these is not, it's, it's no-brainers. Um, Steelers have been been good in years. I feel like Ben Roethlisberger is far beyond his prime, but the loyalty to that to that organization is actually costing them. They're not even trying to draft something to back him up. Like, <laughs> I don't understand what's going on there yeah. now. And I realized that this was an issue for... Quite some time. This was one of the issues why they lost Antonio Brown yeah, and yeah. Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, be because it's tell, like, yeah. when is this guy going to realize you're not that guy anymore, bro? Like, Not the franchise anymore. Yeah, like, you, you, everybody's saying Bill around this guy, but the only reason he's looking good is because you are the best wide receiver and the best, best running, running back, back yeah. and mm-hmm. pass catching running back in the league at that point in time. And they wasn't getting paid, so they left. And ever since they left, you, you've you been l- looking pretty yeah. average, bro. Yeah. <laughs> pretty average. So at the end of the day, I guess, I get with the Bills. Uh, also because I drafted Josh Allen in, in fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> so he's my quarterback. I got him starting this week. Um, and I just feel like the Bills is head and shoulders better than the Steelers right now when it comes to offense and defense. You got a young quarterback with, Stephon Diggs. Um, you got a defense with a bunch of good linebackers and safeties. And cornerback, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. So I don't care who Ben Roethlisberger try to force this ball into, he can have problems. I also drafted the Bills defense, by the way. But um, yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but y'all sound like y'all got a lot of investments in the trick. Um, with that being said, the next game we have the 49ers. And the much improved Detroit Lions. I don't know how y'all feel about that. Uh, that's a tough one. I got the 49ers. I think last year the 49ers had what I'd call a. What, the injury flu? Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't even describe that where every player on their team seemed as if. They was getting, they was blaming like the turf or something. Yeah, they were, they, they were going down pretty, pretty quick. I think Kittle went down first, and then it was all downhill after that. And, and I just think they had a rough year last year, and I think with everybody healthy now, they could, they can make a run, they can make a push. So I'm high on them this year as well. Just, just, just as an improvement team, not like a championship contender, but like one of the teams that should be exciting to watch. I'm not really that high on them, but um. You're right. They did have a lot of issues last year. Um, I think they could pull off this game. Um, but the Lions are an improved team. 
Uh, I probably go to Forty Nineers. I go to Forty Nineers. <laughs> I drafted yeah. uh, Swift in fantasy, by the way. So it's hurting me to even say that he got a bad game. But you like your kettle. <laughs> but I must say, the Forty Nineers, like you said, they're they're coming back off injury. They have a lot of their guys back, a lot of their star guys who were pretty good the year before. Also, now you got uh, you drafted a quarterback along with. The quarterback that you paid twenty seven point five million dollars mm-hmm. to, I don't understand their logic that's going on down also, there. And patriot, you're still in the air, right? Just <laughs> sweepstake, but that's a, a whole patriot, different. Hold on, time out. You're a Patriot fan, so of course you would have to say something so negative patriot towards. Fan, I mean, Gar- Garoppolo. How did he earn twenty seven point five after seven games? Uh, uh, just for background information, Garoppolo is the quarterback that was supposed to replace Tom Brady on the Patriots. Supposed so every to. Tom yeah. Brady fan does not like Garoppolo, which is which is why you would always hear a small remark when it comes to Garoppolo from yep. this guy. And the problem is that he's supposed to be the up and coming. Yeah, but and ever Brady since got that him day, Brady has won two Super Bowls since Brady. he left, and this man hasn't done nothing okay. but Brady, first of bring all. turmoil. <laughs> he <laughs> he he made, he this man <laughs> went two Super Bowls with Brady. two different teams. Yeah, very good teams. Though. Well, at least the Buccaneers was... Two different teams really, really since Garoppolo really gone. And Brady. you pay this man more than Brady? If Brady didn't get him traded, he would have been the future of the Patriots. Yep. And he would have been looking... Maybe not. He wouldn't have win yet, but they would have been looking way better. They would have been looking way better than they looked for the past couple of seasons. Right. He'd have never had Mark Jones. Maybe not. But uh, at least the jury's still out on Mark Jones. He, he can see. <laughs> right. You don't even know what Mark Jones could do yet. Yeah, yeah the jury's I know still out on Mark Jones ain't fighting for your job. Because let's, let's also <laughs> remind... He got out of the fight. <laughs> the fought, exactly. Mark Jones just right, beat out a former <laughs> MVP. Jimmy Garoppolo here is now fighting with playing time against a rookie. A rookie who is not, in my opinion, not as polished as Mark Jones of yet. Trey Lance has very good potential, but I've watched him. He, he needs to tighten up his throws. He, he has the leg potential. He definitely has the, the, the scrambling and the out-of-pocket potential, but he has to, to, to tighten up his in-pocket, sit back there, and deliver the ball mm-hmm. accurately. And Mark Jones can do that. But Jimmy Garoppolo hasn't having an issue with who's going to play. They're even trying to figure out what type of offense they're going to run because the offensive coordinators say we might have a set where we have two quarterbacks on the field at the same time. I don't know what type of foolishness the 49 is doing, <laughs> but for right now, I game with the Lions. You got a good defense. You got a motivated head coach. You got all the intangibles to upset a team like the 49ers in week one. And you also got Goff, who's coming back to prove. I ain't saying Goff is no superstar quarterback. Preface it. Jared Goff has something to prove that he was once considered also an MVP mm-hmm. candidate. He, was, he, he was. was the first overall pick. So he had the potential. Now he just has to bring it out. Not saying Detroit is going to win no bunch of games and probably even make the playoffs. But for this game, this game. I feel <laughs> Given that, that the, the Lions are could come out and upset the 49ers tomorrow at 1. Um, Possibly. <laughs> probably. Mm. After that, we got the Vikings versus the Bengals. To me, these are two of the most mysterious teams I see in <laughs> on this. Because that's the, an appropriate word. <laughs> yeah, t- I just being real, like I, I've watched a lot of these other teams and I could see what direction they're heading in. But the Bengals, I don't know what they're doing. Um I just don't know. The Bengals to me, they've never been good. Uh I've never seen a season where I've been like, oh, I'm scared of the Bengals. The best player, the best times I could remember the Bengals husband was uh it was Palmer and Ocho Cinco or Chad Johnson at the time. Yeah. That was the best of them. And that was about it. And they still wasn't winning no Super Bowls or even they making it deep. They just lost their, their best wide receiver. Eh? They did. They, they eh? This is what you call, uh, I, or this is what I call in the toilet bowl right now. And then you got the Vikings who, <laughs> I don't know, they just don't live up to expectations. You had, at one point, you had Stefan Diggs and you had Thielen. You get rid of Stefan Diggs. You get lucky with still getting Justin Jefferson. Cool. You got Dalvin Cook, one of the best running backs in the league. 
Stop and I'd be like, bro, your defense, you got Harrison Smith in the back there. I think they even got Patrick Peterson this year from the Cardinals. And I was like, I look at this team and I was like, bro, you have all the talent. And then every week you'd be like, oh, the, the Vikings, oh, man, <laughs> they didn't pull this one out. And be like, okay, like you ending up seven and nine, eight and eight, nine and seven. You'd be like, bro, with this roster? Yeah. I don't understand it. So, uh, but I'm pretty sure you expect him to beat the Bengals, though. That yeah, Joe Burrows boy, I know. Joe Burrow, he, 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 I, like I said, they're mysterious. I, I, yeah, they, 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 they the like best player on the team is obviously Joe Mixon. Yes, but after Joe Mixon, and good. to be honest, I, I like Joe. Boy too. I like Joe Burrows as a number one. To me, I like Joe Burrows as a number one better than Trevor Lawrence as a number one. But you haven't I even seen Trevor Lawrence play I, I watch college one. Ball. I like well, Joe how Bryan. don't you I, like I, him? He do the, did he even lose a game in college? They like plenty of them, but yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go there. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that's not good are, enough. Where, where to? Anyway. My, my point we is, can get you, down can't, you can't judge him because you haven't seen him <laughs> yeah, play. Yeah, we, we get a door. We get a door. You haven't seen him play <laughs> we get a door. Uh, good competition yet. Yeah. How can you judge him? I mean, he's playing Texas. They're still in good competition. So he, <laughs> I ain't get no good judgment off of week one. <laughs> but I guess, to me, uh, for me, personally, like I say, these two teams are mysterious to me. But I go in with Vikings just because of that running game. And if the air attack isn't working, you could just ground and pound. Like, I got, I got Dalvin Cook well. is healthy now, and I think they can just ground and pound. Team. I got Vikings. I mean, the Bengals... Like you say, outside of Joe Burrow, and that's just more or less looking to see if he's going to become someone versus, oh, this guy is so good. Outside of Joe Burrow and uh, Mixon, they don't really have the talent to match up with the Vikings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll go with the Vikings. Um, the Bengals don't really have a lot going on, like I said. And then, you know, they lost a lot of good defensive pieces. Um, and Kyle lost and William Jackson, so... Um, I don't expect it to be a blow, but I do expect the Vikings to win probably easily. So I get the Vikings. Okay. Well, uh, not a one o'clock game, but he's one o'clock game. <laughs> he's one o'clock games, but he's going to go past quick. But you got the Jets and the Panthers. <laughs> the New York football Jets. <laughs> Voices is the Carolina Panthers. Oh, boy. These, I don't understand. I, just, I don't know. The last time, Carolina Panthers hasn't been good since Cam left. Mm. And the Jets haven't been good. <laughs> 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 Period. That's what the guys are saying. Period. <laughs> um, last time I remember the Jets being good was probably 08, if I'm not. Mistaken. Jesus, that's a long time. That, was, uh, that was about it. I used to say from them in fantasy, you know. And that's when they had um, that defense that, that that didn't like Tom Brady. And they had Darrell Revis and oh, all those guys there. But that was about it. They draft, drafted Mark Sanchez and he did the butt Jesus. fumble. And that <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> it was his downhill yeah, after yeah, the butt yeah, fumble. Yeah. So, I don't know. These two, I I must say. Sam Donnelly is much better. Sam Donnelly. Like what? Sam Donald, I don't know what's going on with him. Uh, boy, personnel-wise, I must say the Panthers has a better team. But I I just want the Jets to win this game. For some reason, I just... Uh, I think I'd go to Jets. I go with the Jets with that rookie QB. I shouldn't... You know what? Whatever. I go with the Jets. It's, it's, it's whatever. This is a toss-up. This 50-50. <laughs> the Panthers have a better team, but they just don't prove nothing to me. Okay, so the thing is, when you don't, for me, when you don't know what's going on when teams are this mysterious, go with the best player in the, in, in the matchup. So who do you think is the best player in the matchup? Christian McCaffrey. That's true. Am I wrong? <laughs> I'm, you're not so, wrong. But so, Sam Dana? You're not wrong. Who can, who can, who can give him the ball? <laughs> Don't forget yeah. this guy is a pass catching back, you know. Christian Christian McCaffrey actually yeah, on, sometimes Sam. gets more receiving yards than rushing yards. Uh-huh, but in Sam, years. Sam ain't that bad where he can't just drop back, wait for Christian to get to the side and kick it to Christian. He's he's bad, but he's not that bad. Like you gotta be really bad. If Don't you forget can't get now, this is the team he used to play for, so they know what he does. 
Like they can anticipate There's a lot of potential for revenge. I don't want Sam Darnold to throw this rock every time. Yeah, there's a lot of potential for revenge game there for Sam Donald. Um, so, um, and then like you said, Christian McCaffrey is by far the best player in this game. So, I guess. so with that being said. I still think I can with the Jets. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I go with the Jets because uh, I like Zach Wilson. I think he has a lot of potential. Yeah, I, I like him for true. Um, and I think he's I think he's going to have a, a, a great game. Um, and I think uh, the Jets will squeeze this one out. I, want, I just want to make note that this is the second or is it the third team matchup that Sands picked where there was a rookie quarterback. Yeah, he, I have no problems. He, 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 he can learn. I, I realize that I that's, no it, that's the mo. <laughs> I have no problems. That. Now, if you notice, I'm picking up against experienced teams. I pick it up against yeah, that teams is that true. are part of the toy board. They ain't going against nothing, yeah. nothing heavy this week. Exactly. Sure. So yeah, we will get into some further matchups later. But I got I got my the punches coming teams. out this one. I got Christian McCaffrey doing what he does. Okay. Well, the last one o'clock game. On the schedule, I mean, all of them start at the same time, but they have them listed in a certain thing. Uh, the Cardinals and the Titans. Boy, now, like I say, the bad might be matchup against bad, but with this, I see a good matchup against good. You got the Arizona Cardinals, who is coming off a, a very good season. Uh, I feel like Kyler Murray could be possibly, if healthy, an MVP candidate this year. Also, you got... One of the best wide receivers in the league. You also get AJ Green on the low. You got one of the best wide receivers. Well, one of. Yeah. I'd say one of. Because you can don't forget one yeah. other side of the field. Now you playing the Titans. Yeah. You still got Julio Jones over there. Don't, yeah. don't, yeah. I said Julio five. Don't, yeah. don't I do mean, it. That Steph boy DeAndre. Diggs, you got some. You got some top. Like it's way yeah. one. It's arguable. Um, and then you got a good defense. You still got Buda Baker. You still got good guys on that defense. But you're going up against a team. That made some noise. You got King Henry on the other side. You got AJ. Julio Jones. I need AJ. That's, you got AJ that, Brown. That, that why I just mm-hmm. You got a defense and a defensive minded coach. And then you got Tannehill, who seems to have resurrected his career right. yeah. since leaving the toilet bowl <laughs> with the Dolphins. A big, in a big way. So it's like, bro, this could be a slug fest. Like, this could be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a big game if all the stars align the way they should. Right. Yeah. So, um, with that being said, I am going with the Titans just because everything between these two teams match up except the running game. So, you could look at the wide receivers, be like, hmm, they are they nice. Hmm, the defense, both of them have good defense. Hmm, the quarterback still, two of them could hold their own. And then you look at the running game, like, you got Derrick Henry versus who? <laughs> Chase Edmonds? Exactly. So, <laughs> it's like, uh, I go into the Titans just because they have a better all around, full offense, right. and all around game that could. Pull them out of tight, whether it's a passing game, throwing game, offensive game, defensive game. You have that 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 superstar RB one, basically. I'm I'm high on the on the wide receiver one A and one B, and and, <laughs> and AJ and 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 Julio. I I think they could cause mayhem in the league, and I I think they're gonna beat the Cardinals. I'm a huge Julio fan, and I want Julio to go back to the point where everyone's like, okay, yeah, do this. Ooh, nice. the Undeniably one. the best the one number one. Yeah. in the league. And yeah. I think Matt Ryan was just... I'm biased. I, I no more worries Julio need, need to be on Matt four Ryan. straight years and Matt Ryan just... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping that this is the year when he's like, let me show you all that I still got it. And Donnell is throw that deep ball. That's yeah, Don, say, yeah he, Donnell, he can launch that run. Yeah, he, he can launch that. I, I got the Titans too. Um, Like you say, the, the, the combination of AJ and Julio is scary. But it's a scary receiver call. And Tannehill has only gotten better since he left uh, Dolphin Town. So, um, it's, this could be a close game. Now, don't get me wrong. This could be a close Henry, game. Henry, King Henry is a... Yeah. But, to do it. Exactly. Yeah, you all still there with them. It's like he's... It's not that you can't <laughs> pull the box. Because yeah. 
you have two elite wide receivers right. there, so you can't Jesus. put eight people exactly. in the box now against Derrick Henry, Henry and one of the best offensive lines. Henry reminds me of the, the little icon from Pac Man when he, he think him and he gets strong, he just be eating the the ghosts who's becoming <laughs> that's what Henry's around me, bro. That dude was just swallow defenders, right? Yeah, I, I, I yeah. Can, uh, that offense has potential to be very good this very year. Very good this year. Very, one of the very best good. By far. But um, that does it a lot for the one o'clock games. And don't forget, all these one o'clock games you could catch on NFL Sunday ticket. Through Rev Please TV. get your the Sunday The only ticket. one in the Bahamas. Please get your Sunday That ticket. you could get the NFL Sunday ticket with. Now we can move into more of the 425, 430-ish games, if it's on Bahamian time. And we got <laughs> Broncos versus Giants. Um, not too much star power here, but you got storyline. You got Teddy Bridgewater being traded to the Broncos in the offseason. Um, you got their wide receiver, one. Coming back off an injury, they drafted pretty well. That defense now, they still got guys who were there from the Super Bowl run. And I feel like the Broncos has a good defense. Um, their running game, they pick up the guy who was with uh, the Chargers before Eckler. Oh, man, Gordon. Say the guy who was mm. bro, disrespectful. <laughs> Melvin. How do, how do you... Melvin. How do you, how do you... But how do you describe Melvin Gordon in reference... You mean the guy Eckler? who got... The guy who got, <laughs> the guy who got released because his backup was better? He got released because he was sitting out, if you remember no correctly. He was sitting out for more money, and then Eckler come in, he was like... Oh, oh yeah, shoot. yeah, man. You want to be greedy, right? <laughs> right. Good. But that's why he got released. Not really because, you know, Eckler was like, Eckler outwork him in preseason or something like that. Oh, and it was him. Bro, Matt, don't disrespect Matt. Like, <laughs> you can't produce on the bench. Guy. You, you want to be home sitting now? <laughs> Dog on the field. You see who got paid. Everyone is sitting out. He just, did it. he just didn't realize Eckler was that good. All right, then. I don't even think... Keep it up. The Chargers realized that was that good. And they was just okay. You know what? Let's just go to Eckler. And Eckler was well, like, now we watch know. This. You know Eckler. And then <laughs> this guy is now that guy who got released for Eckler. But I think they get a nice offense, but I don't think it'll be ready for game one. I think they still got some pieces to fit in. And I think the Broncos just always has that slow start. But then you play in the Giants. And you got basically the Giants. You got what? Peppers. Over there, safety, and then that's about it on the defense. Um, you got Saquon coming back, yeah, but Saquon is limited. I don't think they're going to put Saquon full speed right. game one against that defense because that is a very aggressive defense. Um, just another one. Daniel Jones, I feel, has something to prove this year mm-hmm. because he had a good rookie season Man, yeah. and he had a terrible sophomore season, and now he needs to come back and prove that, I hey, Danny Jones is a star. we ready to go. So, I thought I, he could have. I mean, his yeah. fr- after something. his first season, yeah. I thought he was a star. He could have been so. He had the potential to be something. Mm-hmm. That's why it's, you got to be careful about projections with these guys because well, you could fall off a cliff. Yeah, everybody but have up and down, yes. With this game, I think. <sighs> I think I game with the Giants. Because even though they can give Saquon limited touches, I feel like if he have a. Uh, a breakout run like in the first quarter, second quarter, you're going to be forced to feed him. So mm-hmm. it's like, wait, if Saquon, if you hand him off the ball and he getting six yards of carry, seven yards of carry, first downs, and he get like a touchdown in the first quarter or second quarter, it'd be like, bro, yeah, you on a, on a restriction, but <laughs> you eating, dog. We, we, we can let you eat today. So I don't see nobody on the Broncos who could do that. Especially that guy. No, Saquon's so, the best player in the matchup. <laughs> if, I, I would go with the Giants. If he's not compromised, Saquon's the best player in the matchup. Um, I'm going with the Giants, my home down boys, New York, you know. Oh, boy. Um, I believe uh, Jason Garrett has a lot of work cut out for him um, in terms of making sure my, um, Daniel Jones can, can get the appropriate looks that he needs to get. Uh, but I think just the presence of Saquon Barkley will open up the offense a lot more. And made the game easier for Daniel Jones. Um, and I think the Giants could squeak out a close one. So I'll go with the Giants. I got the Broncos in this one. I think I think uh, 
we we're judging the Broncos based on what they did last year, and I think Teddy Bridgewater makes them a much better team than 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 Drew Locke. And then uh, Melvin Gordon didn't really show us much last year, to be honest. So he got he got to redeem yeah. He got to, he got this year to redeem himself. And then uh, the Giants, after Saquon Barkley and Danny Danny Jones, you don't really got nobody else. So talent wise, even though Saquon is the best in the matchup, I still think the Broncos got a more talented team. Yeah, hmm. I guess hey, that's a close game, but we'll see how that one goes. Um, Three of our featured games are in the 4 o'clock, 425 um, range. So we'll get to them. But before we get to them, let's complete our last two games, which are the Sunday night game and the Monday night game. On Sunday night, you got the Chicago Bears. Should be a good game. Versus the Los Angeles Rams. You got the Chicago Bears who have drafted, I feel, their quarterback for the future. But they ain't playing them. You also got... <laughs> don't worry, he's going to get his chance now because you got ooh, the Red Rocket starting for you. Mm. Had the chances yeah. with a better team last year and couldn't do nothing. So I don't expect much from him. Okay, quick quick prediction. When do you... Uh, which week do you think Andy Dalton will be benched? <laughs> I have to look at their schedule, but... I don't think I got no This game going to be the first, the first uh, notch in his belt because I feel like the Rams can slaughter them. Mm-hmm. Um, they will. <laughs> they will. To be honest with you, that's about it. They got their quarterback. Their running back is okay. Montgomery has been good. Um, Robinson, Allen, like these guys are good, but mm-hmm. like yeah. you're going up against the Rams, bro. Like they got top defense, the yeah. top uh, one of the no top question. cornerbacks in the league. They got Aaron Dolans, like the defensive Aaron player Dolan. of the, the, yeah, the year. Um, the last five like, years, bro. Then you got an offense who is motivated now because you got good wide receiver in Cooper Cup. You got Higby as your tight end. You just traded for Sonny Michelle, who was a good running back really for the good. Patriots. Really but good running back. The only thing with, with, with the Patriots is he had to share a lot of running time. If you give Sonny Michelle a full game and you could give him, hand him off the ball 10 to 15 to 20 times a game, that guy is going to put up points. And then you get Matthew Stafford. Now, Matthew Stafford, I feel, is one of the most underrated quarterbacks I've seen. Mm-hmm. Since he came out of Georgia, I, li- I liked him from college. He came out, he just went to Detroit. Like, bro, you, you, you just had a bad break. You went to Detroit. But even in Detroit, he had some magical years. You know what I like on their team, too? I feel with that Rams team, they can, they can slaughter Deshaun, them. Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, he's sneaking there. Yeah. I, like, I like him he's on that team. He's sneaking there on that, on that mm-hmm. team. And mm-hmm. the only thing the Bears really got on defense is honestly Khalil Mack. Yeah. And I was sorry that he went there, but <laughs> some people play for the money, some people play for the rings. <laughs> it, it had to happen. Some, some got to get uh, Mack is a beast, though. That dude yeah, is he, nice, he's a bro. I got Rams, but I got Rams in the blue. Um, like you say, uh, I think... Uh, they just overall just a much better team defensively um, with Aaron Donald about there and then you got like you say Michelle I think was an underrated pickup underrated underrated pickup um, and with the with the Bears it's like but like um, Andy Dalton like you say how long does it take for for him to get benched eventually right they have the oldest team in the NFL um, currently um, so it's like I, I don't really have a lot of faith in them this season but especially this game itself, I expect them to really at the they things. Yeah, I got Rams as well. It's, I mean, it's a no brainer. Rams could blow them out the water. Well, I guess. Well, that was that was one of the easier picks. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and the Monday night game. The Monday night game, the solo game on the Monday. We got the double R's. Yep. We got the Ravens versus the R's. Raiders. Double R boys. Double R. Yo, you remember Double R? Those are Double R. So that's Monday night. Um, you got the Ravens now coming back with blood in their eyes after losing the division last year to a uh, surprisingly good Cleveland Browns. We'll discuss that coming up. Um, and then you got the Oakland Raiders, who I feel, ah, oh boy, this could go either way. You got John Gooden. But you now in Las Vegas, where there's plenty of distractions. I, I wouldn't want to know what it is to play <laughs> as a superstar in a super city like that. Mm-hmm. So you got the Raiders with Derek Carr, 
uh, young guys like Ruggs, them who ain't even used to this NFL yeah, lifestyle, you know, man, you're going to throw them in Las Vegas? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boy, that's rough. But I feel like in this matchup, mm, and as it is in Vegas. So, boy, it is a close one for me. But if I had to pick, I feel the Raiders can pull this out over the Ravens. Just because, like, the Ravens, you know that they have to go pass heavy. They're not going to have a very productive run game. And if if their quarterback wants to run this RPO and pull the ball out, that means... He is free game. Come on, he will. Someone no, can light him right he up. Can, he, you can yeah. keep doing that. I think, like, yeah. but I think it's at the point where he can't even help himself, bro. He's just a kid in the candy store. When you see the open field, he got to go, bro. Yeah, well. I, I, got, I got the Ravens in this one. I think he will do that, and I think he will win because of it. I just don't think that could be sustained. I think eventually they're going to have to say, hey, listen. You can't be doing that, but it's, mm-hmm. it it could win him a couple of games. Yeah, I think this is one of the games where I go win him. I I I feel the same. I think um, injuries will eventually catch up to the Ravens. Um, but uh, the the results of the injuries will eventually catch up to the Ravens. But I don't think this would be the game. I think they'll be able to pull this off against the Raiders. Yeah, I get the Raiders. So we'll see how that one, mm-hmm. we'll see how that one go on Monday night. Um, I guess at some point. Tuesday, we'll have a live pod where we have interaction with the fans and we recap all the games that goes down Sunday and Monday. We'll see how our project, our predictions pan out. And I guess we'll see you when the best man wins. Now, we got three key expert pick games. At some point... Me which games? I feel like these points need to be worth more than other points. <laughs> but that's just me. But yeah, these yeah, big yeah, games, get it up, these get are it three highlighted games that we choose from the schedule each week that we feel are going to be some of the marquee games. Um, the three games that we have are all on at 425 and also on NFL Sunday Red Zone ticket. So you got the Browns versus the Chiefs, a rematch of the AFC championship game mm-hmm. where the Chiefs Slightly beat the Browns, not blow out, slightly beat the Browns on a last drive that Mahomes had to make some magic happen in order to beat the Browns. You got one of the biggest rivalries in football right now, division rivals, and also just team rivals. You got the Patriots versus the Dolphins. So you got New England with... Mark, and then you got the Dolphins with Tua. You got Tua and Mark who came from Alabama. Mm-hmm. Both of them are the same, come from the same structure, came from the same coaching system, come from the same background. And as we get into that, uh, we, we'll see the difference that I'm going to bring up against them. And then you got the Saints and Packers. It isn't the Saints and Packers of Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees, but it's the Saints and Packers of Aaron Rodgers and Jameis Winston. Jameis. Yeah. So... <laughs> So as it, much as you want to say, it's 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 the same game, Saints and Packers of Aaron Rodgers versus Aaron Rodgers. Oh, okay, let's put it that way because oh. Aaron Rodgers going through some stuff right now. I feel yeah, uh, that would be a huge yeah. distraction to the entire Leave team. Your personal problems at home. <laughs> All right, so which one we starting off with? Uh, we the... can start off with the top. We'll work our way down. We start off with Browns and Chiefs. All Browns right. and Chiefs are also two of the top predicted teams this season yeah. because right now you got. OBJ coming back for the Browns. Yep. You got them also. People haven't realized that the Browns signed J- Jadavion Clowney in the offseason mm-hmm. to go alongside Miles Garrett. That's just so you yeah, got a monster. a monster defensive line, mm-hmm. good secondary, and then now you got Baker Mayfield, who I always tell people in sports, always look out for people on contract here. People that say, oh, the end about the money is about the legacy. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> At the end of the day, I always notice you see guys go that extra mile. They go above and beyond when they know their contract on the line. When they know it's time to get paid, they go above and beyond because they know that you get paid based on your stats. You get paid based on your performances. You get paid based on what you produce on the field. So the further you go in the season, the more wins you get, the more touchdowns you throw. You now could go to the table and say, well, you can't give me 35. 
if that coach are getting 40, I need 45. So that's that's the motivation for Baker now. You got Jarvis Landry, you got Odell Beckham, you got Nick Chubb, you still got Kareem Hunt, mm -hmm. you got Hooper as the tight end. Like you got a big offense that you could now do some damage alongside a defense that could hold some points back. But the problem is, you week one you going against the Chiefs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, boy, to be honest with you, my pick, personally, I game with the Browns. It, that's, see, that's not a bad pick. Let's be real. The Chiefs won't be undefeated. Yeah. They are a great team. They, have they are a championship contender, but yeah, they yeah. will have some losses. The Browns is one of the better teams that I, I mean, agree that I could, I could do it, but... Mm -hmm. uh, t I can't go against. I can't go against Mahomes I'm, at home. I'm not going against Mahomes at, not at home. Good. Um, good, good. I I expect the the Chiefs to win this game. It's not going to be an easy game. At the end of the day, the Browns they have a lot of weapons, like you say, and they have a lot of additions. They just have to put put it all together. And they were close to doing that last year. They were close to doing that last year. This could be a breakout year for them in terms of getting to their goal. But you still have to pass through that man who's been running the AFC for the last, what, two years? So I'm going to go with Mahomes and the Chiefs. I, I think it's going to be, it, it could possibly be a game where the Chiefs catching up. I think the Browns could take the lead and they could control the game. But I think in that fourth quarter, Mahomes, the reason why. The saying, <laughs> and he could end up winning the game. So the I, reason why I didn't pick the Chiefs. Is because, like I always tell people, I don't care what team you have, what dynasty you have. Especially in this day and time, there is championship windows, and there are windows for you to be great. The Chiefs now have, have a three-year window. They're, this is going now into their fourth year. Mm -hmm. If any year could be a time for them to decline, well, uh, this would be their year where, not to say they can be trash, but this is going to be the year where they don't live up to that expectation. You've just been basically to the Super Bowl the past two years, and one game away the year before. Mm -hmm. Now you're in a situation where, fellas, watch you get figured out. Fellas, watch you get picked apart. Mm -hmm. so, and this was the team that almost beat you before they watch you get picked apart. So it's like, okay, we almost beat you. And then we, we saw what the Buccaneers did to you. And then on top of that, you lost pieces. You lost Sammy Watkins. Your running back isn't as stable as they used to be. And you lost two key offensive linemen. And you can put all this weight on Patrick Mahomes. One thing I always tell people, as much as I say Tom Brady is the GOAT, football is still the ultimate team sport. Yeah. You could be the I greatest agree. of all time. And if you ain't got no good team, well, I fellas can pick you apart. You, you have some stressful I, days and some sleepless I nights. I think it's definitely potential for a letdown, but at the end of the day, I, let's look at it like this. I mean, they did win the three straight AFC championships, but they only got one Super Bowl to show for it. So it's not like they've been winning the whole time. So I think even though there is a potential for letdown, I I'd imagine a dude like Patrick Holmes is not uh, satisfied as to where he's currently at in his career. If if the Browns win this game, I wouldn't even consider it an upset. Like it's it's this uh, is more expected to be a close game than anything. Yeah, I would game. not consider this upset. Like like we say, the Browns they have as long as you're not the favorite. When you win, it's an upset. Yeah, if the underdog it, wins, that's an upset. But yeah, the Browns, they expect, to, they expect to be a, a, a Super Bowl contender this year. I guess. Right? So They should be a Super Bowl contender. Yeah, I mean, you was just in the AFC Championship last year. You should expect that. <laughs> right? And you're getting Odell, like you say, Bach. So, don't forget, they have a window as well. So you got to go all out this year because don't think you're going to be Super Bowl contender. Has their window even really opened, to be honest? It is. They're getting better been and the, better. Don't forget, this was a toilet bowl team now. The Browns have been the laughing stock of the So NFL when the window starts? The past when 25. They, when, last they, season, when they quiet. season, when they get with OBJ. No, OBJ. Was OBJ was no, they had OBJ before, before but their window before. opened when they, when they started winning. They actually won the Vinati in the AFC Championship. You got both this season coming up. And maybe next season say, to try to get it done. Their expectations started when they when they when they acquired OBJ. I think that's where they, that was their, one of the building blocks. I yeah. think when they, that's when their expectations increased. And like you say, uh, the official opening was they got Landry the same time as OBJ, right? Landry was there first. No, Landry was there first. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. So that okay. So I'm trying because I was trying to figure out what was the big thing about OBJ. The fact that his parent OBJ with Landry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they're pairing them. Now, like you say, getting Jadavian Clowney and pairing him with Miles Garrett. 
I just and add. They get a really, really good running team. Running, they get two running, running backs. Back. Yeah, yeah, that's why I say and, that team ain't no sleeper. Yeah. No, they, no, that's I, not, that's I, I get in with the Browns, bro. I but think the Browns have to could go. Put it all together. Is Baker Mayfield a guy that's gonna put it all together? Yeah, when it's, when that money involved, and you know you about the this the difference between you being out the league in three years or one of the highest paid quarterbacks in three years. Pick your struggle. And technically, Baker is the weakest link on offense. We'll he's see. the most unproven link. He's the, weak, he's the weakest link. He's so the most I mean, unproven link. I think Baker's going to have a, a, a big year this and year. And if you flip that with with, with, with uh, the Chiefs, their QB position is the strongest link. Mm-hmm. Uh, which controls the game the most. I mean... You need someone to put this, put the put this two together. You know what I mean? It's, if Baker can do it, then they have a chance to be really good this year. If not, then... It'll be an interesting offseason, believe me. Well, like I say, my money on the Browns got game, and they're not going to disappoint me. Now, speaking of disappointment, (laughs) we're going to now talk about the next game, the second highlighted game of the week, where you have the disappointments, I mean the Dolphins versus the Patriots. (laughs) I mean disappointments. (laughs) And the Dolphins, I knew, because of the... Area code we live in. The Bama National Team. Have not won a championship since 1972 or three. They haven't won a championship since, since the Bahamas been independent. Since independence. So, I don't know why Bama's like them so much. Because obviously, nothing there to, to, to reminisce about. But the Dolphins versus the Patriots. We got a big storyline here with two of former Alabama quarterbacks. Who... um have good experience, has good, good coaching. Uh, we have, even though he's a Dolphin coach now, he is a former Patriot coach. So a lot of this, there's, there's a lot of intertwined webs between the Patriots and the Dolphins. We signed uh, Van Hoy, Van Hoy back this year, who left us to go to the Dolphins, didn't produce. So he came back to the Patriots this year. Um, one of our corner backs, one of the twins, McCarty, he left, not the good one. Devin McCarty is the good one. Jason McCarty, who was the lesser twin on the field, has left awesome. the Patriots to go to the Dolphins. And it's like, it's always a back and forth with these guys. So, me personally, of course, I'm a Patriot fan. We know who I pick in. I game with the Patriots, obviously. But, Tua and Mark Jones is the, is the matchup I want to see. Because even mm-hmm. coming out of college... I know Dolphins fans don't want to hear this, but their wide receiver who came from Alabama said that he rathers Mark Jones over to her when they was in Alabama. That don't mean that. He, uh, I mean, that's your wide receiver. He's he playing with you. <laughs> if anybody should be endorsing, <laughs> right, it should be it. his own quarterback. Yeah. So how you could come and play on my team and then can tell me, or oh, the, the guy who succeed me is better than me? And I already trade you to the... Uh, <laughs> Any, any. So you, we know you got before we even yeah come out, we, we know, know you got yeah yeah okay. <laughs> you got for sure That's you got easy. the Patriots uh, I got the Dolphins Ooh, right wow. and I got the Dolphins I, I'm gonna go against Braden's oh, belief hotel. that I only that I only choosing <laughs> rookie quarterbacks to win ironically I also have the Dolphins <laughs> oh this, this smoke mostly um, because I mean the Dolphins are I I just can picture every every Dolphin fan in the Bahamas being excited for their first win. As you usually are against talking to Mark against the entire league and then for the rest of the season, yes. Like we know. <laughs> we know so, the Dolphins have historically had the Patriots number for a number of years. What? Right? <laughs> historically they've been able to get at least one game from New England. Okay, but that is no accomplishment, bro. Right? <laughs> Wait, why I mean, why Dolphin if, fans if, say that? If way? New England wouldn't like <laughs> if if they wouldn't the enjoy their games, they would have 12, 13 games every season. One game. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one game. One game is be a problem. Like, oh man, we put that one game on their so, lose record. Boy, I, I got the Dolphins. Bad. I think um <laughs> Mark Jones, um they like they I think the Dolphins are gonna blitz Mark Jones. I don't think he's he's gonna really be completely prepared for the defense he's probably about to see. And I envision it's going to be a rough opening game for him. And for the first time, just like that, for the first time, Sands goes against a rookie quarterback. Yes, so I'm going to go against rookie quarterback for their first game. Mark Jones, I think he's going to have a okay a rough time. Keep in mind, the reason why one of the reasons why Tom Brady left is because that our offense is now not a pass-heavy offense. We are a run-heavy 
offense. That's why we have so much running back. Even though we let go Michelle, that was one of the reasons Michelle was mad because we have so much running backs that guys share so much time in that backfield. And that's why we went out and get two good tight ends who could block that edge and set the, the edge for. So Mark Jones doesn't have to come out and be a uh, uh, dark press guard and throw 58 ball. Mark Jones could come into this game and throw 18, 20 passes, mm-hmm. and the Patriots still could roll because even them 18, 20 passes can be check downs, five yards, seven yards, 10 yards pass. One deep ball every now and again when they feel froggy, but don't think that this game can be literally on the shoulders of Mark. This can be more of a strategic game between two coaches who are trying to outduel each other. You got a defensive coach who came from the Patriots going up against Josh McDaniels. And it's just going to be a, a, a... I think it's going to be more... I don't think it's going to be high scoring. I think it's going to be more strategic than people think. People are going to tune in because of the storyline, but I think it's going to be a low scoring strategic game. Okay. But we'll see how that go. And then we got the last game we have on our third pick of the week. Um, the Packers and the Saints. Um, honestly, I never liked the Saints. Just because of Drew Brees. I know he's going to say that. It's not a good reason not to like them, though. Anybody who competes Yeah, because like, my thing and... is, it wasn't a comparison. But I know that you have to bring someone in the conversation. Like you can <laughs> like sports will never let you be was the greatest by the yourself. Question. They'll okay. always try to compare you with who they feel should be okay. up there with you. Was Drew Bees ever the best quarterback in the league? At any season. In any season. <laughs> you really can sit there and say no. Which season? Because even when they win the championship in 09. He wasn't the best? No. No. So I had no season in Drew's career. Was he the ever so the best? Brady 09 was the... when Peyton Mann was slaughtering the league? He is one of the best. He is always. But he was never number one. No. And no season. Not that I can recall. But you could tell me one. I know he never. Wait, oh seven? No. Wait, Tom Brady was smoking that. Oh eight? <laughs> Boy, uh, Peyton Manning. But it always was between Tom Brady and Peyton Manning until Aaron Rodgers okay. came and that. started. And then yeah, I was I like, that. Aaron Rodgers took a lot. Yeah. A lot of those years in between where Drew was still always top three, but mm-hmm. he just but he never could yeah, get was, that he wasn't bad top Aaron. number one spot. And then as Aaron Rodgers started to decline, Brady somehow reasserged. And then you get Mahomes. Oh, no. Then you get mm-hmm. uh, uh, Andrew Luck at one point had a good MVP so season. Good I was like, well, it's just that like Drew Brees never could have break through. To but get what, that what, it, it all depends on what you say is the best, though. Because, I mean, just because some, a quarterback has an MVP season doesn't mean really mean he's the, the best no, in the that, league. Uh, no, because agree. Okay. MVP, Bree? you you winning the MVP depends on a lot on what, what a lot your of team is. Breeze is just so, very consistent. Yeah, he's, he's very steady. A consistent you know, he, top three, yeah. top five quarterback. Very, very but he just over. never was number one. So with that being said, uh, he ain't even there no more. So I don't even know why we bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna get passed this year by Tom Brady for number one all time passing yards. Uh, yeah, so that, that's gonna get passed. So. I, I got I got the pockets in this game. I mean. Look, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is obviously going to be the big storyline. Um, we're interested to see how he looks, how he comes out, how focused he is. I think the Packers is going to get this one. I think um, Jameis, uh, that's my boy, but I think he got a little problems. I see a, a heavy pick game in his future. Um, so <laughs> I, I got the no Packers. Yeah, Don't got forget, the... man. The man was had a, 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 a cataracts. Jamin Winston couldn't see, and he's showing them 30 interceptions. Yeah. Now he went and had corrective <laughs> eyes. Hey, he ain't on the I feel he can have a much better season. He ain't on the problem. He may have a much better season. He ain't on the problem when he's throwing the dirty touchdowns, right? So don't blame him. Don't blame the picks of the eye. Two people there. Don't blame the picks of the eye. And I throw 30 interceptions and 30 uh, 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 touchdowns. That's 50 50. I throw it to two guys. <laughs> now, whoever go for the ball, let on that. In 2020, listen, he may have a better season, but he, he, uh, Rodgers is still Rodgers, bro. And I don't think yeah. Rodgers on a decline. Like how we talk about Big Ben and, you know, I yeah. think no, Rodgers Rodgers, is still Rodgers. He's a very Well, steady. he is coming off an of MVP season. So, so, yes. so, and I feel like the only, uh, Aaron Jones is coming back good. And you got. Devante oh, Adams. Mm-hmm. And don't forget, there's a small pickup who I also pick up in fantasy that people are forgetting about, Randall Cobb. He was mm-hmm. always one of Aaron Rodgers' favorite, favorite receivers, mm-hmm. and he brought him back specifically. That was one of his demands for him to stay, that he bring Randall Cobb back. So I feel, even though Randall Cobb isn't at his peak, 
he will force feed Randall Cobb because he likes that slot receiver and he likes that 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 basic bailout basically mm-hmm. that he could always put the ball in. So I feel like Randall Cobb is gonna have a big game and also a bounce back season before all them break up next year. So <laughs> um, with that being said, it looks like it's gonna be another big week in the NFL. Yes, a huge um, opening week. This season has a lot of potential to be a great season. Uh, coming off the whole COVID thing, I look in the stands and the stands are filled. The stands are packed. Um, before we go, we want to say, list, uh, you can find us on the experts on IG, Facebook. You could rant with Sans on Twitter. You could Definitely. <laughs> you could Rain watch us takes. on the YouTube page. You have us on SoundCloud. Once again, we'd like to give a big shout out and thank you to our sponsors, Rev Trio and the Rev guys down there who are presenting the NFL Sunday Football Package. In order for you guys to watch these games and break down what we have told you and let us know if we're making any sense, you got to get that package. You got to watch these games and let us know if our picks were right, wrong, or in between. And don't forget, if you have Trio or, or you're a triple play customer, you get that NFL Sunday ticket at no additional cost. So... Listen, for those who already have it, you can't beat that deal, bro. That's a lot of value. And you're getting every single game, games that you can't find on NBC, games that you can't find on ESPN, you're getting all of them. So go ahead, call up Rev, and sign up for that package, bro. So, yeah, you could call Rev today at 601-8992. Once you call there, you speak to a representative, you sign up for it, and you're good to go. So until we meet again, check us out on Tuesday. We're going to be live after the games. You could give us your comments. You could rant with Sans. You could talk facts with the X Factor. And we could go at it. And we're going to let you know who won, who lost, who had the best fantasy week, who had the best picks. And we're going to be there live on Tuesday at 9.30. Also with a special guest in mind. So until Tuesday, X out. Sir. Sure.